Radio Engineering Graphics and Design Learners, welcome to the How to Hack Your Pet series only on How to EGD. Now remember, this specific video builds on the previous videos in this series. And we're going to be zooming in on 5.1.1 in your official pad document on page 14 that talks about the requirements for the floor plan. Okay? That must be drawn to a suitable scale, but preferably not smaller than scale 1 to 75. All right, that is the intro to the floor plan. Let's go a bit down because here they talk about elevations and the section will do that in another video. But what are the inclusions that must be in all of the relevant views or drawings in this part, very important part of your pad document. It's the business end, I say, of the pad. Okay, so make sure you go through this list yourself, but you need to include all exterior features, the door and window details, okay, must be included in this actual floor plan. The roof detail, in other words, your roof overhang, roof lines, all rainwater items, all right, roof lines. Rainwater items is your rainwater downpipes, your gullies. Those things need to be indicated in the relevant view, which is this floor plan. All permanent fixtures, all the things that's permanently fixed within this building, the sanitary, the reception desk, your kitchen cupboards, built-in cupboards, those are permanent fixtures. It excludes people chairs, tables, those kind of things. That's not going to be shown in these drawings. All electrical fittings and wiring detail. All right. All electrical fittings and wiring detail. We'll look at examples of both of, of all of this. Your wastewater disposal system. In other words, your sewer. How do you get your sewer from the building to the actual main sewer? All your titles, labels, and notes needs to be clear. Your scale needs to be indicated. You have to have detailed dimensioning. So it's different from the free hands where you just did primary dimensioning. This dimensioning needs to conform in a way that a contractor must be able to actually build this building. So there can't be any dimensions left out. You need to indicate your cutting plane because that is going to uh, help you determine your section elevation. So the placement of that is critical. You'll have to have all the hatching detail plus your north point. Okay. So literally all of these are included in the floor plan. Let's look at how it will be assessed. So if you go at the bottom of the checklist 5.1.1 here is the requirements for your floor plan. So does it correlate with the selected freehand solution and selection process summary? You remember the previous page that we did was the actual selection process where you decided on your final concept. So does this floor plan that you've eventually drawn correlate with that selection process and that freehand solution. That's important. Do you show on this floor plan all the internal and external walls? So there's going to be a difference in the thickness of the walls because some of them will be external, others internal. Do you show all your roof lines? I'll actually show you how this looks for a Dutch cable roof. All doors, including the rotating door, have you shown that? And the windows. All right, again, I'll show you details of these all permanent fixtures, okay, I've explained that to you, all electrical fittings, wiring detail, wastewater disposal systems, your title labels and notes, detail dimensioning, your hatching, has that been done correctly, cutting plane, is that included, yes, and then did you use a suitable scale, that could, uh, and was that indicated, and the north point, okay, so I think the best before we get to the actual drawings here is to just check where this fits in on our pace setter. So if you look at the pace setter that's available as a download in the description, there it is. We're at 5.1.1, the floor plan now. It's on an A3 page and this is the estimation date. Your teacher might have specified your, their own date, but it's going to be part of your second term. All of these drawings, including the elevation section, site plan and two point perspective, all of that will be due before um, the end of this term. Okay, let's look at some examples. All right, remember the examples that I'll be showing is not a conference center, but it's the elements in this that you will have to include in your own drawing. So keep a mind out for that. Let's look at, we'll start here from the top. Okay, so as I said, detailed dimensioning. All right, so it's the specific dimensioning of the different parts 
in here, but it's also the overall dimensioning that needs to be included. Must be correctly done with your dimension lines, arrows, etc. All right. Then the cutting plane. Now, in this case, there was two requirements. There's a BB, and at some other place, there's an AA. But where is your cutting plane? Did you indicate that? All right. Then the electrical fittings needs to be indicated with its uh, switches and lights, and that's neatly and correctly drawn. Then it's the external walls, internal walls, and you can see here the hatching also correctly done. Then it's the roof lines, all right, showing the roof overhang that needs to be shown. And I'll have the opportunity here. This is not a Dutch gable roof line. I'll show you a roof line of a Dutch gable in a moment. Then it also requires you to do all your permanent fixtures, your kitchen sinks, all right, your, built, uh, your toilets, your wash basins, all of that, the built-in cupboards. All right, the reception desk, if that's a requirement. All of that needs to be included. Then it, they talk about the sewer detail, which um, I encourage you to do in a different color. It's brown. Make sure it's correctly labeled. Of course, this one is Afrikaans, but you know inspection eyes, writing eyes, etc. Um, for the English learners. And then at the bottom, your north arrow. Okay, then you will have to add... On yours, your drop-off area, which isn't included, of course, in this example, because this wasn't the specification. But you'll have to have a drop-off area with your rotating doors, and to make sure you get that right. An example of your roof lines for a Dutch cable roof. Let's have a look at that. So you'll actually see in the JPEGD workbook, they've given you an example of a Dutch gable roof and you'll see most of the drawings of all of the drawings that you've done in your pad is reflected also in or should be reflected in your actual work that you do in school. So a Dutch gable roof line, can you see how that looks? This part here represents the Dutch gable part that's viewed in this elevation. So that also gives you an idea of how the elevation will look in the end. That is an area that is at a 90 degree angle as in this picture here all right and when we draw it make sure it doesn't go like you would in a traditional roof go all the way to the end here for that reach it ends and then there's a straight part here that's that's the important part in your roof lines for your floor plan to identify okay there is an example of the rainwater downpipe with its gully that if the water falls on this roof it runs down into the gutter and into the gully with the rainwater downpipe and that's something that's important for you to in the end add you can see it there also in the elevation okay but your floor plan needs to be labeled clearly uh, whether it's a toilet or a conference room so remember those labels are going to be important even the labels on your electrical if needed all right um, okay let's look at another example so this is one of my other learners and their pet from last year. Now just look at um, something here with regards to the details. Every door must have its door frame with its swing. Every window needs to have the window with the sill indicated. All right. There is again the cutting plane and the various labels as I've said before. All right. Now let me zoom out for you to see the entire page because that's for me is important. If you look at the scale of this drawing, this drawing was done to scale 1 to 100 and you can see with all the dimensions around it, how greatly this learner spaced it on this drawing. And I think to me, that is critical for you to ensure that your floor plan is well planned on this page. So that you're able to draw it with all the dimensions, with your sewer lines, etc. in. Okay, please do not just start drawing, but plan this drawing. And that's where the scale is going to be important. Scale 1 to 75 might just be, I feel, too big. For a page like this and it's going to make it difficult for you to really space it well but you can give it a try it's going to depend a lot on your actual design of your um, conference center so if yours does fit work to scale 1 to 75 because that is the requirement in the pad but i have checked let's say you have a very different shape and it's it doesn't fit on you can change that scale to fit to be suited to fit on this page but by default Keep it to 1 to 75. And how are you going to calculate scale? Because some learners sometimes ask, that, how do we calculate the scale? Let me help you. All right. If your wall is 10,000 
millimeters. The length of your wall is 10,000 millimeters. Okay? To know how long it is on your actual paper when you draw it, you're just going to divide it by 75. All right? If your scale is 1 to 75. If your scale was 1 to 100, you would just divide that by 100. And that will give you your actual measurement that you will use to draw your line on this paper. Okay? Sure, that makes sense. Take your measurement, whatever that is that you've determined in your concepts, and you divide it by 75. For, so each measurement you'll divide by 75, and the answer will be the actual length in millimeters on your ruler when you draw that line. Or if it's scale 1 to 100, maybe your design doesn't fit on A3 easy enough, then you're going to use scale 1 to 100, and that will be the length of each line. I think that's simple enough for you to understand. But make sure that this drawing is done to a high standard and a good quality, because it is important drawing. From this, you're going to draw your elevations, your site plan, your floor um, elevations, your section elevation, etc. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Now it's your turn.